Whoa, fucking hell. I heard like they do. I genuinely heard. I think it's a person, do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello? Returning to Little Corner Churchyard, where we investigated a few weeks ago. For anyone that saw the episode, you'll see that it ended in an extremely strange way. The whole environment around here changed and it all became incredibly negative. And I'm not afraid to say it, I was honestly terrified. Um, and I think we all will agree, none of us felt very comfortable here anymore. Hence, we decided to end the investigation and return at a later date with fresh minds and uh, a new set of eyes because Sophie um, is able to make this one brilliantly so we'll see if she experiences the same sort of stuff we did last time. We never intended on doing a two-part episode on the Little Cornard Churchyard but after some extremely tense and interesting activity we decided we just had to come back and document more of this extraordinary haunting. So we thought we'd take a little walk around the churchyard, highlight various areas where we had activity last time, and sort of fill Sophie in on what she may be able to experience tonight. Um, Although should we, thinking about it, should we maybe not fill her in on it so that it's more of a shock? We'll give you little details. Okay. Um, we won't tell you the whole story about various different things, but we'll let you know vaguely. And there's something I do want to leave out and not tell you that I think was key to uh, the activity that when the activity changed last time. So this particular area here, we were over on the other part of the churchyard. I think we all saw that, and it, it's really weird way of describing it, but the whole environment changed black. It got a lot darker over here. Um, and we came over and we had EMF readings all over this area, didn't we? It basically, it was, a, well, it was kind of, Almost like something was walking around us, the way that it was sort of going off. I mean, I was stood there at one point, I was actually spinning around holding the MF meter, strangely, but it, it seemed to be going, as I was turning around, it seemed to be there were spikes going as, as it moved around. But it, yeah, it was really weird to, as, as we stood over there, we noticed how dark it was. Yeah. We headed here, I and mean, by the time we'd been here for about 15 minutes, it seemed to go back to being light again, but for a period of time, it was really dark. Um, and having the environment change, I've noticed here a few times, it does get darker in various areas and that seems to highlight where the activity is going to take place so hopefully and unfortunately we haven't got any pieces of equipment that can detect light how light it is or how dark it is but hopefully we'll be able to sort of locate various areas based on how light or dark it is that's tricks on me because i'm seeing lots and lots of dark and light moving across there just like loads and loads of random speckles of darkness and light yeah 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 it's I, all I can see it's gone pitch black down there. It hasn't I could see the thing before, the little entrance bit. I think we need to go down there. Ooh. That was a big one. That was really weird. I could almost like feel that push against the front of this. No, this is this is the area with like the two most defining points of the night for me. This is like the first point of where I came around the back here, and then as I was leaving, going down that way, I saw a taller than me black figure standing right here. Um, and then I, I got back around the front and told you guys about it, and that's when you told me that you'd seen the same figure. We actually filmed a shadow here, yeah. didn't we, Luke? Yeah. 
bring a look you into it. You filmed it before? Yeah, this we was filmed the show, yeah. a year or two ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. For, I think first first time we came here, second time we yeah. came here. Mm. But I've never been somewhere where you see stuff so frequently. Yeah, and so vividly as yeah. well. Then, like me and Hannah were hearing the footsteps on the grass over there, seeing shadows going past the hedge. And then also the moment here was when I was filming Luke because he was looking that way, and I thought I saw two eyes above the above that grey stone. Yeah. And then Jason went over with the EMF meter, and as soon as we got there, EMF spikes. It was going nuts. Yeah. Mm. Whoa. From from stands over there to here, like the atmosphere just went completely. It, it, like someone turned the background sound down. Yeah. I guess like it's dead over here, but not like in, there's nothing. Whoa! What the. F Oh man, that was, was that? that was really scary. Shadow? No, I turned around and there was like a full on like white person Pissed here, oh, no. just right next to Luke. But like for a second, you went. saw you saw a white mist past my head earlier, didn't you, Jace? Yeah, that was over there. That wasn't a mist though. That was like like a person was there, but like lit up yeah. right next to Luke. For me, the defining moment of that night was seeing what I can only describe as a small, probably about three or four foot goblin looking creature. And that's the only way I can describe it. You saw exactly the same thing it, we were just sounds, comparing. It sounds almost comical. Yeah. Bearing in mind how serious the people that know us know how serious we take it. But it looked almost like it, <laughs> it was basically a goblin. Um, and it was almost like it was mocking. It was mocking. It was like it was, you know, ah, I'm over here. Yeah. You, you, you can see me kind but of. But it, it didn't was, it move. Weird. It didn't move it in a way. Yeah, it was all Yeah, disjointed. It was all kind of pixelated almost. Yeah. Um, it didn't move like any living thing I've seen or any person. It was, it, yeah, it, it certainly was strange. It was quick, it was but it was kind of out of phase. I probably yeah. don't know how to describe it. But it, it had no all... contacts. You couldn't hit, hear it or anything. It was absolutely silent. Right. Um, now we have got. A number of cameras hopefully we'll be able to set one up on a tripod along this path and maybe try and capture a little bit of evidence of that um, as you probably know anyone that works with night vision or infrared cameras it's difficult to get a broad range of stuff you can see so people might be watching this and thinking well you've seen all these things how come you're not recording any you've got to think we're standing there constantly with our heads looking around while we're holding a camera and the camera is only pointing in one direction so the chance of being able to capture something He's very slim, but like I say, we've got some we're going to put on tripods and hopefully we might be able to angle them in certain ways. We need to make it on sort of... Every like, area uh, covered, really. 120 degrees, so yeah. we cover that 360. Thing. Yeah. That's, that's hard to do, but yeah, we should try and do that. Just before the investigation, I decided to take James and Jason to one side to discuss a couple of ideas I've had as to why the atmosphere suddenly changed so negative on our last investigation here. So I've taken you guys over here for a quick chat, um, and this is a bit I didn't want Sophie to hear because I think me and James have discussed it, but there's two ideas I've got as to why the activity suddenly changed. Okay. One is that Maybe it reaches a certain time in the evening, yeah. which was about half past ten, when it just naturally changes, for right. whatever reason. Um, and we'll be able to test that tonight, mm. to yeah. see if it does happen. And the other thing was, I believe, you challenged it in a, oh, in a certain yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Put yourself on the cameras, I'm commanding you to do that. Put yourself on the cameras right now. You, you demanded that they show themselves, and they sure as hell did. But maybe they didn't like being challenged. And it's that, one of those that was two the turning ideas. point. It's about a minute after you. It's funny. Show. It's not the first time I've had someone say that to me. That once I do something, I mean, the investigation at Lavender that I had yeah. was when I went into that room and called it a coward. That's when it then yeah. said over the thing, "Don't talk to me like that." Really clearly to the guy that was the audio guy. He just went, "Oh wow." So what I want to do is wait until about half past ten, see if any of us feel a change. Then I'm going to wait till quarter two. And if you're right to change it, but we're not going to tell Sophie. And I want a sign that we can give each other if we feel the atmosphere changed bad at that point. I think, I think just to tap on the legs. Two taps, taps yeah, you know, if we feel it change. So Thumbs up. <laughs> and we'll see if at that particular time, whether it's half ten or whether it's after the challenge, that she feels the change. 
Soon after this, we prepared our equipment and began our nighttime investigation. If you are a child and you play about in this area, if, it, if you exist in your time and somehow that's crossing over, and you have the ability to see us, and you're trying to communicate with us, can you make something happen for us now? Oh you guys heard that, yeah? Yeah. What is it? That was like consistent noise for a few seconds there. If you're trying to do something, make something that we, we will understand is you. Show us something. Do something unique to you. Give us a light display if you can. Wow, I've just seen something right across there. Across where? I don't want to walk in the grave. What sort of... Jesus what did it look like? Oh, I can't see anything. It was just like a... Right, if you moved across here, if you were trying to show yourself, then do it again. Make the wind get up for us if you can. Move this tree, move the tree branches. Can you touch one of us? Not, well, I don't think anything feels especially bad at the moment. It's just... It's tense. Like you say, just that, that, that whole tension. Are we still quite like early into in time scale compared to last time? Yeah. We investigated for approximately 45 minutes but didn't experience anything particularly unusual and certainly not anything as prominent as the last time we were at the churchyard, so we decided to have a quick tea break. It was upon exiting the churchyard that we heard a loud sound of something crashing up against the side of the church. So Jason heard crash somewhere behind the church just before we were going on break funnily enough um, so I'm going to take a walk around on my own one way and then go around the other way just to see if there is anyone or anything that possibly caused that noise that's I thought I heard that's right over there a bit of wood like a fence like the fence bear in mind there are a couple of pigeons around up there having it out like that yeah but they wouldn't have knocked over a wood thing. Then. So we've gone around the other side. Yeah. Hello? That was, oh my God. That was the um, trifold meter just going off. Are you around here at the moment? I think you're interacting with that piece of equipment. A little further up the path from where I was standing, I heard the distinctive sound of someone walking. My first instinction was that it was either Sophie, James or Jason, but all three of them were accounted for around the other side of the church. To add to this strange event, straight after I heard the footsteps, I also heard the Trifield EMF meters alarm register a spike in EMF. Right. Oh god. What happened? Okay, so I was walking up here on my own, just doing a bit of camera. Yeah, and yeah. I heard someone walk along this path. I got here and the Trifield meter was just going off. Really? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it just that atmosphere for a split moment just went wild. That's Imagine picking up that, right? magnetic fields at the moment. We were walking around this early with cameras and it wasn't triggering like that. We were sitting in front of the cameras. What's that? I heard like giggling. I genuinely heard. From which way? You think it's a person, do you? Yeah. It's going 
Whoa. What's that? And that's going off again. Battery's completely that's dead on the torch. That's the reach. That's the reach that. There's got to be someone over there. I just heard that really clearly. It sounded like someone said, look out. It was really clear. Is that gone dead? This shouldn't die like this, because this, this charge is USB. Like, this is full charge. No. No. It's completely dead. That's so weird. <clears throat> Whoa, what's that? Sorts, yeah. What was that, man? There's something running up on the grass. Yeah, but it's the same again, James. It, it, whatever says flying tricks, it'll be one place or another place or two at the same time. Yeah. We've got to focus on one place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. That started giving me a bit of like an anxiety attack then, that. Oh, did one. Stay calm, it's not do the same as last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we tried to do that last time. It just happened. No, it didn't. How far back that is where you keep hearing and seeing stuff? Yeah, it was like halfway through. It was like halfway through, halfway through, halfway through. When researching into the history of the site, we discovered that numerous child plague victims are buried within the churchyard, and as well as this, a Victorian schoolroom also used to stand in the grounds. Could this child we just recorded giggling originate from one of these two periods? Halfway through. We continued to investigate and all felt an increasingly tense atmosphere. It was at this point that Sophie decided to leave the investigation because although she didn't feel what was there was especially negative, she was unable to continue with the strong, heavy atmosphere around us. Because of this, we were unable to complete the experiment that we'd planned earlier, so instead went for one last push to try and drive out the negative energy that we'd encountered here last time. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, 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 a lot colder, and there's no wind even. The wind's completely dropped and it's just freezing. I think there's two different people here, or two different energies here. I know one of you doesn't like us very much. And last time you did indeed scare us off. That's This time it's not going to happen. You showed yourself to us. Well, all of us have seen you. We know what you look like. Come on. Show yourself. Right, I'm recording towards the trees. Put yourself on that tree now. Show us what shape you take. in front of this, this camera right now is this all you've got the occasional shadow it's rubbish isn't it is that the best you can do is it because you know you're not getting rid of us or you've stopped all of a sudden felt like something touched my hand. Did that spike as it as that happened? Yeah well I, I moved it and that would have, that will if you move it quickly hmm. well. That wasn't. That's not no. Was that? You put yourself in front of me. You just touched my hand. Ah, the battery's gone. You what? touched my hand like just spike. Just drained. Completely. Just completely drained. Shit. Whoa, fucking hell! Okay, maybe you're not scared. 
that was like an icy cold hand just grabbed hold of my EMF meter around me. I'm not joking, my hand was absolutely freezing then. Like something just grabbed it. We continued to investigate but didn't record anything particularly substantial and the atmosphere never changed negative as it had done last time. I personally believe we were in the presence of the children spirits throughout the whole of the night and for some reason the negative entity never raised its head. Our investigation at the Little Cornard Churchyard came to an end and although we didn't record as much activity as we know the site is capable of producing, we had some very memorable experiences and will certainly continue to monitor the hauntings here over the coming years.